Hello and welcome back to On The Rocks. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode where we might have a cup final on the cards. No little introduction today because we need to get straight down to business. There's an awful lot to talk about because a lot has happened in between episodes. But I think we'll start off at the basics with what's happened in between episodes. And in between episodes, we have been in superb form, really, really top quality stuff. You were last here for the, uh, obviously the loss to Montpellier overall in the Europa Conference League first knockout round, and then the 2-1 win to Hamilton. Since then, we have played six games and only conceded two goals in those six games, which is fantastic. We started off with the Scottish Cup quarter final against Wraith Rovers, which we won 2-0, as you can see. We then beat Dundee United 2-0 with Canberra picking up a brace and getting another goal in a 2-1 victory over St Mirren. Following that, we had a phenomenal win against Celtic, 2-0 at home with a really good result. Uh, this one was close. We beat Rangers not long ago, 3-1, right? Uh, this one wasn't as far away. I mean, we, it was closer, 15 shots to 12 shots. I think the Rangers game was like 25 shots to 10 shots for Rangers, but we played really well. They missed a penalty, which didn't really help them out massively. And in the second half, we were superb, so we got a really good result there for us to win 2-0. Followed up with a 3-0 win against St Johnston, and then a 2-1 win over Hibs last time out. Rounded off a win in every single game since you were last here. That now takes us into the championship round, which is quite exciting. So, of course, we're fighting for the title. Although we're not going to win the title, there is still stuff to play for this season. But first things first, we've got the Scottish Cup semi-final, and we've been gifted Air United from the Scottish Championship. It was us, Air, Celtic, and Rangers left in the Scottish Cup semi-final, and absolute dream, Rangers and Celtic got drawn against each other. So we've got Air United from the Scottish Championship to play. Really, this should be a routine win. Like, we should be getting ourselves to the Scottish Cup final. Today, we will definitely play the Hibs game, and we might even do the Celtic game as well, because that might have some big implications. We are currently only two points behind Rangers, which is massive. We've got five games to go in this championship group, and there's a huge chance that we could actually overtake Rangers, get second place, and get some Champions League football next season. Unfortunately, as you can see, unless Celtic lose every single game, there's no way they're not winning the league title, right? So expect Celtic to come and win the league title but we are fighting for second place right now we are 20 points clear of Hibs so nothing to play for there it's just a straight battle with Rangers so there's the fixtures and league spoken about the next thing to talk about is the Patreon because all of a sudden loads of you have signed up for that which is massively appreciated I think maybe there was some sort of issue on um, like the Patreon end because I got like 10 emails coming through yesterday telling me all these new people have signed up and I think they must have been staggered over the past couple of weeks or so, but I've just not been told about any of them. Um, so I do apologize if you've been a Patreon member for a little while and you've not had a shout out yet or a thank you from me. Um, but I wanna say thank you. I'll have to look at my second screen because there's so many names to look for. But I wanna say a massive thank you to Daniel Burns, uh, Veal, thank you very much. John Lee Gaming, thank you very much as well. James Sherry, Ross McGuinness, Rex, and uh, Yasin as well, thank you very much for your donations. Much appreciated. Of course, if you want to get involved in the Patreon as well, link down in the description to the Patreon. Plenty of benefits there, including access to all the save files from databases, which I need to put on, because I've been a little bit slow doing that, so I do apologize. Uh, there's a new Patreon podcast, which I have not yet recorded, so need to record that to bring it out. That should come around at the start of every month, so that new podcast will come out in a few days' time as well. And also, you get to have a regen named after you if you subscribe to a certain level. And that's the next thing to talk about. You saw it in the title of today's episode. It's been the youth intake day, and it was a decent one. So on the screen right now, you will see a screenshot of said youth intake and two really solid players coming through. Uh, Daryl Rice at the top there, uh, one and a half stars of current ability, five stars potential, a 15-year-old attacking midfielder, which is a nice position to have actually because we don't really have many attacking midfielders. But as you can see, his technicals where they matter are really solid. 15 technique already, first touch is great, dribbling's good. I'd like to get his finishing up a little bit so maybe we could make him a shadow striker at some point or, or something like that like that. He's got some all right physicals for the most part. The physicals are okay. He could do with a bit more pace and strength and stamina and stuff like that, definitely. Uh, and then where they matter as well, his mentals are pretty good, but we can obviously get them tutored up to make those even better. So I'm very pleased with Daryl Rice. The other great player coming through is Gavin McCormack, and he's a striker and looks very good with 13 finishing already at 16 years old. Really nice pace, 14-14 on the pace and acceleration side of things, so he's a decent player. And it's another striker coming through who looks really good. If we just look in the squad comparison down here, right, we've got Shankland, who's obviously the best right now. 
Ignore Gordon, he's not really a striker, but Canberra's there and PK there in the first team as well. Then there's Gavin McCormack. There's another guy called Stephen Flynn who came through, I think, last season. Four-star potential ability striker who is decent. But then we've also got Harry Storm, who's out on loan this season. He's a five-star potential ability strike with 15 finishing. Not quite as good pace, but like a really solid striker as well coming through. Uh, he got three goals in 10 games so far this season out on loan at Airdrie. And then we've also got Kevin Hanratty, who's a real-life player for, uh, for, for Aberdeen as well. I think he's going to be more of an attacking midfielder, like a Trek Batista in that sort of role. His finishing isn't really that high but he's had a great season scoring 17 goals in the championship for Falkirk so maybe he is a striker but he'll come back next season and be really good so we've got plenty of really solid strikers ready to play for us. The rest of the youth intake wasn't the greatest thing that we've ever seen. Uh, Logan Clayton I think was the next best player and he's got three star potential right now as a right midfielder but has got you know promise for it if he gets three stars that'll be very very good for us. But Daryl Rice and Gavin McCormack are the ones who are like the standouts this time around so of course if you want to claim one of those guys on the Patreon let me know in the Patreon on the post over there. So that's another thing to get out of the way, which is very exciting. Another thing to talk about is the fact that I have been given a new contract, which is really nice to see. You can see here on the screen, we've offered a new four-year deal, which is fantastic. Uh, the transfer and wage budget, 5.5 and 110,000 pounds right now. That's just what we had left after uh, obviously selling off McCrory. So quite a bit added to the transfer window, a transfer budget for that. So that's why it's so high there. I think next season we should get like six or seven million pounds to spend which would be quite nice but it sets out our objectives quite nicely i guess in the long term it's sign young players to develop and play entertaining football which i think we are doing this season and also develop players using the club's youth system which of course we are doing as well and then on the transfer front no one else coming in just yet but we are narrowing down the scouting search coming into summer so the transfer special in a few days time is going to be fantastic i think but i think after all that talking we are finally through with all of the news and the updates so plenty of things happening and it's a very exciting point of the season for us right now and a very exciting time in general i think to be in this aberdeen save lots happening and plenty of things to look forward to in the future but let's get kicked off with the scottish cup semi-final against air united we're not going to take any risks at all we're going to play a full strength lineup for this one so lewis in goal with a back line of davies mckintyre hoban and laird we've got mclennan ferguson and campbell in the middle with gordon on the left hand side and i've changed the striking roles around a little bit i noticed in the comment section i do apologize i've been a bit rubbish to reply to comments this past week i've been really busy but uh pk and shank can we swap them over. PK is that deep lying forward who's a little bit more technical further back and then Shanklin because he has got his 17 finishing put him as a poacher see how many goals he can get someone in the comment section told me to do this and I've seen it and thought yeah that makes a lot of sense let's give it a go. Apparently we need to have two keepers in the match day squad okay fair enough let's get Ryan Duncan off the bench and get Tom Ritchie on for that goalkeeper on the bench but other than that we are sorted Let's get into this one. So kickoff is upon us here today at Hampton Park, which is a very big stadium. Looking forward to playing in front of a, well, I say a big crowd. I'm looking in the background. It looks very sparse. Like not many people have turned up for this one, as you can see, which is a bit of a shame. Hopefully for the final, when we get there, which we should do, we'll have a full capacity stadium. Watching us beat either Celtic or Rangers, that'll be a fantastic way to finish off this season if we can do that. But we should be getting there. I mean, obviously, Air United done fantastically well to get to the semi-finals of the Scottish Cup, but surely their run ends today with us as McLennan puts his shot wide of the mark. I'll tell you what, we have had a very nice run. I think we enter in at the fourth round and we had... We had a Scottish Championship team that I can't remember who it was. Um, as Shanklin's goal was disallowed, he was quite offside there, to be fair. Uh, we had, I think it was Livingston in the fifth round, who are in our division but not very good. We then had uh, another Scottish Championship team in the, in the quarterfinals. I can't remember it was now. It's going to annoy me how I can't remember these team names. And then, of course, Air United in the semi-finals. Our route to the final has been ridiculously easy. We've been very, very fortunate, especially with avoiding Celtic and Rangers as the Rangers go 1-0 up in their semi-final. This is interesting, actually, because I'm pretty sure both semi-finals are meant to be played at Hampton Park. And yet, apparently, they're going on at the same time. We'll uh, have to double check that one in a minute, see where they played their game. But I'm pretty sure both games are meant to be at Hampton Park. So how they're being played at the same time, I don't know. I don't care. We just need to win this game. And we are approaching half time, not winning it. So Air United are having a fantastic game so far. But they've just given us a penalty, a lifeline to get ourselves 1-0 up in this game. Lewis Ferguson, the best penalty taker in the team, is stepping up for this one. He scored most of the penalties this season. And he scores his 
penalty today. That's his 10th of the season. Most of them have been penalties, I believe, but that's still a very good tally for a centre midfielder. Great penalty, straight into a top corner. Nothing the keeper could do about that one. Literally the perfect penalty, I reckon. 1-0. But it is only 1-0, and 1-0 is not a great scoreline to have because it's so easy for A United to get another goal and then it's back to level terms. So we need to really kick on at the start of this second half and score some goals. We've been great defensively the past few game weeks, not only conceding, what am I trying to say, only conceding two goals in the last six game weeks, which is fantastic. But we do need to make sure that we don't concede any today because that could spell disaster forwards as A United can't bring the ball forward. We get the challenge in there, but they win it back straight away, unfortunately. <sighs> Come on, boys. Let's get the ball off them and try and score a goal. I can feel a goal coming right now, and I'm not liking this. McGowan, the guy won the or gave the penalty away to us, loses possession. We win it back. Shankland wins the ball down to PK. PK's through. Go on, lad. Get the sec. Oh, it's a cheeky chip. 2-0 up. I think we're into the final. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. I think we've, we've given ourselves a good little buffer now. Air United can score one if they want to, but obviously we want to try and keep a clean sheet. 20 minutes or so to go in this game. A highlight for us as Shanklin puts it into the middle of the... Nowhere, really. It's not in the middle of anywhere, Tom. I don't know what I'm talking about. PK puts it into the middle of the area, though. Shanklin's shot is blocked and the highlight finishes. Really good performances, apparently, from all of our attacking players right now, which is good to see. Let's make a couple of changes just to rest a few of them out there. Campbell needs a rest, so we'll bring Tam Lumper on for him. We will also bring Gordon off for Hedges because he's tired. And McLennan will have to stay. Oh, no, him and Hedges can swap over and McLennan off for Canberry on the left-hand side. So it might not be the high-scoring game we kind of expected it to be against a championship side, but we've done the business. We've won the game. There's one final highlight. Can we make it 3-0? A deep free kick from Tam McGlumper in the middle. PK, the smallest man on the pitch, can't... Oh, what a finish. What a finish from Tam McGlumper. Now, that's a pile driver. Superb shot into the top corner. You love to see goals like that. It's 3-0 on the night. And we are going to a Scottish Cup final for a chance to win our first bit of silverware in this save. Brilliant. Couldn't have asked for a better game, that one. Into the final, playing against Rangers, who are definitely beatable. Of course, we'll have to do the final tomorrow on Bank Holiday Monday in the UK. What we'll do is we'll do it as a YouTube premiere, where essentially it's like a live stream. And we can watch it together at the same time and have a live chat going on but it's not live because it is all pre-recorded. But we'll do that tomorrow at 8 p.m., so make sure you join me for that one. Set your reminders now. A nice £377,000 as well for the pooled gate receipts and stuff for that, which is fantastic. Uh, what I am interested to see, uh, we won 3-0. I don't want to see that. How do I get off this? Rangers played at the same time against Celtic at Hampton Park. So obviously some sort of glitch in the system there because there's no way two games can go on at the same time. But now we've got a two week break until the Hibs game. So nice for all the players to get rested up, which is decent. And then once they're all rested up, uh, we'll come back for the Hibs game and probably do the Celtic game as well, because why not? Unfortunately, Celtic are now out of the Europa League. They got to the quarterfinals and lost to Borussia Dortmund. And Borussia Dortmund also knocked out Rangers the round before. They did, yes. They had a great win against Rangers after Rangers had a fantastic win. Obviously, we saw last time out against uh, AC Milan. But that is now all of the Scottish teams knocked out. And I think we've had a very good run in European football this season. So fingers crossed we are going to move ourselves up the coefficient rankings. Oh, now this could be a slight issue. Joe Lewis has just pulled his pecs, obviously by going too heavy on the bench press because he thinks he's a big lad. Um, he's out for six to seven days. The game against Hibs is in five days' time. And Hoban is out for one to two days. That's fine. So Joe Lewis could be a bit of a doubt for the Hibs game. We're also getting to that point where there's players that I want to try and sign for next season. I'm trying to leave it for the transfer special. But other clubs are offering contracts. And I'm getting itchy feet. Do I sign them? Do I not sign them? Jake Clay... Cl Jake Clay... Jake Clark Slater is one... Or Salter. I'm going to say it wrong, aren't I? Jake Clark Salter is one of those players that I'm interested in signing. A 24-year-old centre-back currently at Chelsea. Now, it says five-star potential, but he's 24. I doubt he's going to grow that much. So we're trying to get more scout reports on him to know more about him. However, he's going to sign a contract soon with LAFC. But if they want him, I feel like we should maybe want him. 
He's a good centre back with some decent ish pace. Tackling marking headings not great though. Like 11 tackling, it's not ideal, is it? How much would he want? He's on eight and a half thousand pounds a week right now. I'm going to assume he's going to want a lot of money. Now he's interested in joining us, which is great, but he wants 12 grand a week. And for a player that I'm a little bit mm, not sure, I think we walk away. Don't worry though, there are plenty of players that I am looking to sign as uh, Daryl Rice has turned 16 and now can be given a professional. Oh, we need to do this. I should do this probably. Actually give contracts to those really good youngsters so they don't get poached by anyone else. Ah, Shanklin now out for 8 to 11 days. So he's going to miss probably the Hibs and the Celtic game maybe. That's not great for him. But as I was saying, there are players in our division that I think are maybe a little better than him that I want to be trying to sign. And we'll talk more about those in the transfer special. However, one of them is Kevin Nesbitt, who currently plays for Hibs as a striker. He's the second high scorer this season in the league, so he's certainly a player that I'm looking to bring in to replace Canberra, who goes back, of course, to St. Garland on after his loan finishes with us at the end of the season. So Shanklin can't play, uh, but it looks like Joe Lewis can play. So we'll leave Lewis in goal, but Shanklin's got to come off for Canberra and bring off the bench altogether. Other than that, I think I want to leave the lineup as it was. Let's swap PK and Canberry over, see how they perform. And whilst I'm doing that, we need to distribute to Canberry because he's taller and not the short midget that is PK. But as I say, we'll leave the lineup the exact same. Let's get into the game against Hibbs and look for another win. So kickoff is upon us. You love to see it, which is fantastic. Um, I've lost my train of thought already. I don't know what I was talking about. That's right. I was about to start talking about Rangers needing to slip up. And look at that. Hearts have gone 1-0 up against Rangers. Now that is, oh, they've just drawn level, which is obviously not ideal. But a draw is still very good if we manage to get a win over Hibs. Now, obviously, we're only two points behind Rangers. If we can just catch them up, you know, be level on points in them. We're behind on goal difference, as you can see. They've got better goal difference. But, in fact, what I need to do, actually, is look into how the league is sorted. Is it results between the teams or is it goal difference? I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter right now because we are drawing. So as it stands right now, we are staying two points behind um, whatever they're called, Rangers. But a win would give us two extra points to go level on points with them. So we need to get the goals today. Come on, boys. Do something clever in the second half. We've done great to limit Hibs to only two shots, but we've only had five ourselves. So let's go a bit more attacking. Shout demands more. Can we do something, please? Oh, it's a free kick for Hibs. It's going in the back of the net. It always does. It always does. It doesn't that time. You love to see it. But, okay, let's keep watching. Ugh, it's still 1-1 there. Come on. Please win, boys. I can't believe we're not doing anything out there. Let's make some changes. Gordon has played poorly. Let's get him off. Let's put him up front instead of PK. Let's do that. Give him a go up front. Not as a poach, because it's not really working out. Advance forward. Let's try that. PK off for Hedges. Uh, Ferguson off for Tam McLumper. And actually, Laird off for Roland Hernandez too. Confirm those changes all three at the same time. I also, what I meant to do was put some players on some more attacking duties as well. Complete wing-back attack. Come on. And also Tam McLumper as an advanced playmaker on attack. We need the goal. I mean, Rangers are doing us a favour. And Hearts are doing us a favour. They're drawing. Boys, we can't draw this. We have to win. Oh, no, don't. Let's not lose it. Lewis, okay, good collection. If we do lose and Rangers draw, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? We'd still be three points behind them, but this is a golden opportunity that we need to be taking as Tam McLumper is through. Tam! Oh, it's a terrible shot, Tam. You hate to see it. He should have done so much better with that one. Very attacking. Demands more. Hernandez with a very long throw to Canberra. Great ball, actually, to be fair. Canberra coming forward. Past one. In the area. Shoots. Oh, why can you not get it on target? I can't believe this. Rangers are now 2-2 two -two with hearts, and yet we are not. Oh, this was the opportunity to go level on points with Rangers. And we've really bottled that one. Oh, just going for... We missed Shankland. We really missed Shankland in that game. Massively. I mean, it's another clean sheet for us. The clean sheet's fantastic. I love that. But, oh, that was a golden opportunity for us. And the thing is, the gap will increase a little bit because we've got Celtic next. And 
I'll imagine we're probably going to lose to Celtic. Now, we did beat them not too long ago, but I feel like that was a bit of a one-off sort of scenario. We're not good enough to frequently beat Celtic, particularly away from home. So we'll go back to that five-at-the-back system for the Celtic game as they book a Champions League ticket after winning their game. But we'll probably lose that. But we can take comfort in the fact that Rangers have to play Celtic again. And fingers crossed Celtic beat Rangers and then we'll be still only two points behind them. And then, oh, when it comes down to the last game of the season against Rangers, oh, next episode will be a really good double header with Rangers and Rangers, won't it? For second place in the league, hopefully, and a Scottish Cup final. But oh, I'm so excited. Let's see how we get on against Celtic. Also, while I think about it, as uh, Europa League games go on, as uh, Zoya get knocked out, hopefully, Athletic Bilbao smash them. But actually, that's quite bad for us because Ukraine are challenging us right for uh, places in European coefficient stuff. So the better Ukrainian teams do, the worse for us. So it's good they're going to get knocked out by the looks of things. But I mention it because the time we beat Celtic in between episodes, I do remember now, they played their Europa League game on the Thursday, had a rest on Friday, we played it on Saturday. They were still exhausted. That's why we managed to beat them, I think, more than anything else. So now they've had a week's rest in between games, I fully expect them to, to give us a, a battering. So let's switch to the uh, five at the back formation. I am going to very quickly press quick pick because I don't think, I, I, ooh, I don't quite agree with it. I agree with the back line. Midfield, I don't quite agree with. I'll swap those two over. And then Shanklin and Gordon up front is an interesting one. How about Canberry and Gordon instead? Uh, Canberry and Shanklin, sorry. Let's do that. But that looks good to me. Submit the team. Let's try and get a result. So any sort of point we can pick up here is fantastic, but a loss isn't the end of the world. Only if Celtic can do us a favour and beat Rangers for us when they play them in a couple games time or so. The first highlight of the game though, looks like it is going to come towards us, which is quite nice. McIntyre on the ball, gets it into Hoban, out to Laird, swing a ball into one of his top big the top big big tall strikers that's what I was trying to say don't know why it came out so weird there I'm too excited to talk that's probably what it is as Hoban back to Lewis Lewis now to clear it up towards Davies Davies can't win it because he's tiny compared to the defenders and Celtic look to come forward instead but great challenge from us there Davies ugh, the clearance is poor though if that had just been a better clearance we could be on a nice counter attack there but it's not to be, unfortunately. It's a long highlight, which means a goal. And there we go. 25th goal of the season for Trossard and Celtic go Wandel up. Not the greatest start to the game for us. That's a little bit frustrating, I must say. A Celtic immediately looked to come forward again in the 13th minute of the game. McGregor now on the ball, running forward some pace. Finds Trossard out wide, who gets into the area. Is brought down... No penalty, but it's still going to be a chance for Trossard to try and score. Gets it to Oleg. Oleg tackled by Ferguson. Now, here's our chance to counter. Shankland, oh yeah, if he got that ball through, we've been through, completely through. In the end, it's a great chance for Celtic and a great save from Lewis. Rangers drawing 0-0 with Motherwell right now, though. And actually, that, that would be a great result for it. If they get a draw against Motherwell, even if we lose today... That's very handy for us. What's not handy is Leif Davies getting himself injured. We don't... Ethan Laird can apparently play left wing back, so we'll play him there. Has he got two feet, Laird? Oh, he's got a fairly strong left foot. Okay, that's good. Play him on the left-hand side. What it means is we can bring Roland Hernandez on the right-hand side, and that's that saves us nicely, actually. Hopefully the injury to Davis isn't too bad. He's been fantastic for us this season. I am tempted to try and get him back next season. I think we have to try and get Gordon back next season. He's been superb. The thing is, he's been so superb, I think that uh, Everton will want to try him in their first team next season. So we might not be able to get him. But at half-time, we are 1-0 down, which isn't too bad. There's still a second half to get back into it, as Rangers are still 0-0 with Motherwell. Motherwell, keep doing us a favour, please. That would be fantastic. I've just noticed we've not had a single shot in this game yet either. Not a single shot. It just shows the home advantage in foot manager is huge. We had like 12 to their 15 in the win we had against them. Today, they are really being clinical and defensively sound as well. We just can't get anything as they put that header just over the bar. I think because they have been so clinical in terms of their defending... We have to try and switch it up to a less defensively sound formation, but something that might get us some goals out there, maybe. 
So let's get Dean Campbell off the pitch for Anthony Gordon on the wing. Shankland and Canberra can swap over. McIntyre is not a winger. We'll swap him with Medley. And then we'll bring on Connor McLennan on the right-hand side. That team looks good, though. Submit it. And let's see if we can grab an equaliser out of this. But we are less defensively sound now. So equally Celtic can go and score another goal or two, I imagine. Good defensive clearance from us there. Canberra now hoofed it up to Shankland. And is this going to be the chance for us to get our first shot of the game? No, because we get challenged. But we do hold on to possession. Gordon tackled and nothing. What was that highlight even for? Free kick for Celtic. Christie into the middle. And it's whoa, nearly put in the back of a net by Ayer. Can we finally get a shot now on this counter-attack as Shankland uses his pace to get into the air? It's tack. Oh, and to make matters worse, Rangers have just scored a goal as well. So the draw with Motherwell is... How's that gone in? Oh, you hate to see it. Terrible, terrible keeping there from Joe Lewis. I'll be honest, I have underestimated Joe Lewis. I slagged him off at the start of this series. But actually, he's been a solid keeper until that sort of thing starts to happen frequently. So by looks of things, we're going to lose this game 2-0, which isn't great. And, oh, Motherwell. Motherwell have got an equaliser. If Motherwell draw with Rangers, that is huge for us because it only means that they'll be three points ahead of us. They've still got to... Okay, well, that was poor defensively. We're, we're, this game's a write-off now for us. We're not picking up anything here. But what it does mean is that we'll be three points behind Rangers... If they lose to Celtic and we win how we play when they play Celtic, we will be level on points with them. I and mean, then it all will come down to that final game of the season, which is so exciting. Unless, of course, Rangers beat Celtic, which would be heartbreaking because then we lose all chance of getting second place if that happens. So a lot relying on other results for us. But fingers crossed it all works out in our favour as that was a terrible game for us. But at least we've not lost too much ground to Rangers. Thank you very much, Motherwell. Motherwell, you've done us a huge favour there with Leaf Davies out for three to... That's him out for the season, isn't it then? Leaf Davies out for the season. You've been a great player, but that's him. He's done. Out. Eight assists, two goals, 6.97 uh, average rating is not too bad. So thank you, Leaf. You might be back next season, but... I'd like to think we can get someone better. So, as I say, we're back next time for Rangers and Rangers, which is going to be massive. That's going to be a YouTube premiere tomorrow at 8pm, so make sure you do uh, subscribe to the channel to get reminders for it, but also like today's video. would hugely appreciate that, and comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. Tell me what you think is going to happen in tomorrow's episode. Will we come second, and will we win the Scottish Cup? And if you could choose one... Would you rather win the Scottish Cup or would you rather come second in the league and get Champions League football? Either way, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. I will see you tomorrow. But until then, have a wonderful evening. Lots of love. Goodbye.